Hi everyone, welcome back to my video tutorial for multimodal data analysis. So today I'm going to demonstrate the analysis for joint RNA-seq and the antibody-derived tagus ADT analysis using weighted nearest neighbor analysis. So first we need to load the packages through that, Tediverse and the code plot. So we are going to use the data generated from the bone marrow samples. So you can download the data from GSE 128.639 dataset. I downloaded already, you can see. Uh, you just need the ADT count and the RNA count for today's analysis. So now we can load the data into R. So first, let's load in the RNA-seq data. We name it as bone marrow RNA. So you can see we loaded the data. You can see from here we have 17,009 genes in the row names and uh, we have more than 33,000 cells here. So if we have a look at the row names, you can see it should be the gene names. You can see here. So row names are the gene names. Then we can change the data frame into matrix data. You can see here now we have the large DGC matrix data. So now we can use the matrix data as a count to create a threat object. And we name it as BM, means bone marrow. If we check uh, the C for the threat object, it should be RNA. Let's run. You can see it is RNA. Also, you can click the object. You can see here, we only have one assay, it is RNA. You can see we have more than 33,000 cells in the data set. For the online tutorial, they only have around 30,000 cells. That's because they perform the, the quality control. So we can perform quality control first. So first we need to calculate the percentage of mitochondrial DNA and store it in the metadata. Then we can use the wiring plot to have a look at the M features, N count and the percentage of mitochondrial DNA. Let's zoom in to see the wiring plot. You can see the high quality cells have M feature RNA below 2000 and the N count RNA below 10,000 and the percentage mitochondria DNA is below 15. So we can use those parameters to subset the cells. Let's perform the, the quality control. Now if we have a look at the object again, you can see we only have 31 1,683 cells. So next we can load the ADT data in. So we have the ADT data. If we click the data, you can see the row names are the names for antibodies and the column names are the cells. And we have the same number of cells for the RNA assay before we perform the quality control. It is 33,454 cells. Because we performed the quality control, so in the RNA data set, we only have 31,683 cells. So we need to subset the ADT data to have the same number of cells as the RNA data set. So first let's change the ADT data into matrix data again. 
You can see we changed the ADT into NAGI DGC matrix data. Now we can compare the cells in the RNA dataset with the cells in the ADT dataset. We know they are not uh, equal numbers because we performed the quality control for the RNA dataset. And the quantum names are cells. If we run this code, you can see the lengths are different because uh, in the RNA dataset we only have 31,000 cells now and in the ADT data we have more than 33,000 cells. So let's subset the ADT data and only keep the cells that are in the RNA seq dataset. If we look at the ADT dataset now, you can see we only have 31,683 cells and then they are the same number as the RNA dataset. So if we check the cell numbers between RNA and the ADT dataset again, if we run this code again, now you can see the answer is true. So we have the same number of cells in both RNA and the ADT datasets. Now we can create a assay object as the ADT assay using the ADT matrix data. Then we can add uh, the ADT assay as the ADT in to the threat object. So if we check it again, and to see the assays in the threat object, you can see we have the RNA and the ADT assay in the threat object. So from here, the analysis, we only need the threat object. We can remove the data frame that we don't need it anymore. So in summary for the analysis we have done so far, we loaded the data into R and performed the quality control analysis and created a threat object containing both RNA and ADT assay. So next we can perform the pre-processing and the dimensional reduction on both RNA and ADT assay. So first let's do it for the RNA seek data, we can set the default assay as RNA. Then we can perform data normalization, find the variable features and the skew the data, then run lineage dimensional reduction as PCA for the RNA data set. So next we change the default assay into ADT and set the variable features as the row names because the row names have 25 antibodies. Now we can perform the data normalization, scale the data, then run PCA. We set the reduction name for the ADT as APCA. So we finish the analysis for the pre-processing and the dimensional reduction on both RNA and the ADT as Now we can use the weighted nearest neighbor analysis function, find the multiple model neighbors to calculate its closest neighbors in the data set based on a weighted combination of RNA and the protein similarities for each cell. So now we need to use a reduction list because it is going to calculate the closest neighbors for both RNA and the protein assay. So for the pre processing, we use the PCA method for RNA 
reduction analysis and the APCA as the dimensional reduction for the ADT assay. So let's run the find the multimodule neighbors function to calculate the closest neighbors for both the data set. So R finished the running. Now we can use the result from WNN analysis to cluster the cells and visualize the cell clusters. First, we run UMAP for WNN analysis. So now we can run find the cluster function to cluster the cells. I'm going to use the resolution 0 0.5 to reduce the number of cell clusters because I'm not going to enable the cell clusters for today's demonstration. So now we are ready to use the dim node function to see the cell clusters analyzed by the WNN analysis. So let's zoom in. You can see with the resolution of 0 0.5, we have 23 cell clusters. So we cluster the cells using weighted nearest neighbor analysis for both RNA and uh, ADT assay. So now we can use the feature plot function using cell type specific uh, mark genes and also the, the antibodies. So for example, we can run the antibody for CD45, CD16, CD161 using the feature plot function. We named it as uh, plot1. Then we can run the mark genes using the information from the RNA assay. For example, here we are going to run the feature plot for gene name TDRC, MPO, and AVP. Let's run. So now we can visualize the protein information and the gene information together. So let's zoom in to have a look at the feature plot. You can see antibody CT45 label most of cell clusters and uh, CD16 only label this cluster and uh, cl uh, cluster cells down here. And the CD161 label three cell clusters. And uh, down here are the mRNA expression in different cell types. So this just a demonstration. You can use different antibodies and also mark genes to identify the cell clusters. So today I'm not going to label the clusters. If you want to label your cells, you can use the rename ident function to name your cell clusters after you identify all the cell types by mark genes and also antibodies. So next we can visualize the modality weight for each cell by the weighted nearest neighbor analysis. So we can use the wiring plot to see the modality weights for each cell cluster. So let's zoom in again. You can see cell cluster on the left hand side has a high RNA weight and the cell clusters on the right hand side have high protein weight. So we know cells in those cell clusters 
are the progenitor cells in the bone marrow? Because in the study, they didn't use a antibody to label progenitor cells. According to the online tutorial, the canister 15 is T cells because it has the highest protein weight. So for knowing the analysis, we can also cluster the cells independently by the RNA assay and the protein assay. If we run the UMAP for the RNA assay, then use the reduction method the PCA, then we can cluster the cells based on the RNA data set. And we plot the graph as plot 3. And also we can cluster the cells based on the ADT data set. And we just need to name the cell as ADT. And the reduction method we performed is APCA. Then we can run the UMAP for the ADT assay. So now we can plot the cells as plot 4. And finally, we can visualize the cell canisters that have been analyzed independently by the RNA assay and the ADT assay. So let's see the cell canisters. We can zoom in. You can see on the left hand side are the cell canisters based on RNA assay and on the right hand side are the cell canisters based on the protein assay. So from the RNA and the protein weight analysis by the valine plot, we know the RNA assay analysis is better to identify the cell progenitors and for protein assay, the T cell population are well separated from other cell canisters. Okay, I'm going to stop from here for today's demonstration. I hope my video can help your data analysis. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't do so. And also share my channels with your friends. You can help me to make this channel become more popular. Thank you and uh, I hope to see you in my next video.